we started the Community Athletic Project back in 2018, and it was a way for us to give back to the community, the young people of the community. This golf tournament is, is this golf tournament gives us an opportunity to, to say thank you to everybody, to say thank you for being a part of this. Let's get out and have a good time playing some golf and, and, and have fun and enjoy ourselves and have a, a communal opportunity to say thank you. And we got some perfect weather for it. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, the, last year we had 115 degrees, this year we're at you know, 80 and it's, it's beautiful and nice right. little breeze.
Set and run to go here from Lancaster, California. Mike Zepeda, Jeff Storing off with you on SoCal College Sports.com's coverage. 3C2A men's basketball. Antelope Valley hosting LA Valley. The Monarchs and the Marauders here on SoCal College Sports. And uh, we had a doozy of an opener here tonight as LA Valley came roaring back from a 17 point deficit to force overtime and eventually eke out a win in conference here in the Western State. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Spread the word, www.socalcollegesports.com. We are broadcasting live on YouTube. You can search the channel, SoCal College Sports 1. Starting the lineups for Antelope Valley, Lucas Baxick, Josh Montiano, Dakari Lewis, Jonathan Daniels, and Jerron Franklin. They call him G. L.A. Valley, Manny Capuzian, Aiden Acosta, Andre Paris, David Huggins, and Sergeant Jeffrey. Well, the news for the Marauders tonight, no Evan Scott Alexander, the league scorer for the Marauders. Not playing in this one, turn an ankle on Saturday. And two tender to go today. So it's Baxick, Montiano, and Jonathan Daniels. They go guard heavy, a little smaller. They make up for it with the athleticism of Dakari Lewis. But you go smaller, you need to rebound as a team. That has been a struggle this season at times for Antelope Valley. Jeffrey and Lewis will tap it up. And Lewis... Wins a tap over to Gerard Franklin. Here's Baxick to start things off for the Marauders. We are underway here in Lancaster. Game two of our doubleheader. Great find down low. Lewis with the bucket. Lewis working on the, working on the weak side. Comes off the screen, flashes down low with the finish. Capuzian goes to the deck. Jeffrey inside, the big fella. Up and under move, the lefty layup is good. It's a nice move there from Jeffrey. What a luxury when you're able to score with both hands and he reverses, goes back to the left hand. And that is shades of Carlos got, Boozer right there. You're right, Story. Yeah, he's got Lewis in the blender. A steal by Andre Paris, the leading scorer for LA Valley, and he scores on the other end on the layup after the steal. Daniels gets a screen, looking for one from Dakari Lewis. Here comes a double team. Daniels nearly lost it. There's a hand in there. Wide open three from the corner for Baxick. That one's good. That's a tough break for the Monarchs. Looked like they'd gone a long way toward getting the tie up, but no whistle comes in, and a good job by the Marauders to work it around to Baxick for the open three. Looking for Jeffrey inside, denied by Lewis. Parents with it out front. They go back to Jeffrey. Great feet by Lewis. Sergeant, that might have been a foul. Sergeant Jeffrey able to school. That's great patience from Jeffrey as well. Lewis really? beats him to the spot, but again, he's able to turn to his right this time and finish with the right hand. Daniels off the back iron. Lewis able to track down the rebound. Cross court pass over to Baxi because he's falling down. Gerard Franklin going to step into a triple and bury it. Well, they said the original shot from Baxik was not a three. <laughs> Meanwhile, that shot off the mark. Montiano in transition. Here's Jonathan Daniels who will rise up and float it off the board. <laughs> Quick 7-2 run here for ABC. Has him with a three-point lead. Capuchin has the green light. He's a shooter. High arcing shot that time from David Huggins is good. Bit of a track me early on here, Story. Both teams coming out shooting well. Lewis tries to get up on the board. He's fouled. I'm going to go back to the shot here. From Baxic, they say that this is not a three. And that's a good call. Jeff, does it look like his foot's on the line? Yeah, I think the toe is on the line. 
So indeed, that was a two. First free throw up and good for Dakari Lewis. Let me get a look at Dakari. Dakari, a bounce back from UAV. University of Antelope Valley up the street. A lot of pressure on Dakari Lewis. Here tonight, Jonathan Daniels with the absence of Evan Scott Alexander. And going to need to step up and account for those lost points. J.J. Franklin will sub in for Lewis. Get a bit of a breather here. Full court pressure being shown by the Marauders. Pick up full court. They're in man. Jeffrey down low, and he'll battle the big fella, J.J. Jeffrey getting the better of it right now between both teams. He has six early. J.J. sets a pick, and here's a steal. Capuzian in transition. Lays it up, lays it in. That's a dangerous pass going horizontal. Well, L.A. Valley early out on. Out near the timeline. Yeah, early on playing the passing lane, so you have to make the adjustment. Here comes a double team. Daniels comes around, has that one tapped from the back. Looked like a foul, and we might see some highlight stuff. No, Huggins just going to lay it up, lay it in. Certainly looked like a foul, maybe tapping the elbow of Jonathan Daniels. He loses the ball, and L.A. Valley back to a three-point lead. Daniels Extremely holding. fast pace for a couple of teams that play in the high 60s to low 70s as a general rule. Montiano rises up as his defender fell down. Trey Hawkins getting ready to check in next dead ball. And Khalil Forrester. Montiano struggled somewhat in the first matchup between these two teams. Going one for nine from the field when they met back on January 7th. Forrester with it on the far side, driving the lane, looking inside, has Jeffrey. That was a foul. Well, that is textbook on the pick and roll. Franklin swipes across, gets the ball, but also gets the head. So I think you've got to be impressed with Sergeant Jeffrey early on in this one in the low post with his array of moves and the patience down there. And Mike, you know well that <laughs> one of the main challenges learning to play down low is uh, remembering to slow down a little bit. It's yeah. so easy to get in a hurry down there. And I've been impressed with Jeffrey's control down in the low post early in this one. Yeah, control, poise, good footwork, good finishing. The boys got some shoulders. Well, that doesn't hurt. That helps, sure. Franklin with it, holding it against Capuzian. Hawkins at the top of the key. He can hit that. I'm surprised he hesitated. Instead, he'll reverse it over. Kalen Smith also into the ball game. Baxick looking for a screen from Smith. Baxick lays it up, lays it in. Nice recognition there for Lucas Baxick. Stops the bleeding momentarily. Well, even in the half court, you have to stop the ball on a drive. Forrester has it blocked by Baxick. Baxick says, get that out of here. G. Franklin in transition, nearly lost. It gives off to Hawkins on the baseline. Up and under, no, it passes it off to J.J. J.J. goes up with it. Well, doesn't get the first one, gets the second one to go, so no assist. But J.J. finishes, cuts the lead to one for L.A. Valley. Capuzian, got to step out on him. He will shoot it. Shoots at a pretty high clip, too. Hawkins with a near steal, working against Andre Paris. Paris with the ball right now. Yeah, Capuchin, 43% from three-point range on the season. It's a shooter you have to locate. Forster has it poked away. Baxick in transition, has Hawkins on the right side. He'll drive the lane, kick it out. Franklin wide open, triple. That one rims out. Jeffrey comes in, snatches down the rebound. L.A. Valley going to go to work with a one-point lead, under 14 to go in this first half. Forrester will rise up from three and hit. And Jeffrey did a good job of sealing the defender. Baxick, in fact, fell down. The lead is out to four, the largest here for L.A. Valley. Baxick drives the lane, kicks out. Franklin again from the corner, this time no. 
Franklin working against Jeffrey, and Jeffrey gets the better of it. Rebound off to Paris. Here's Forrester in transition. Forrester kicks out, has Manny Capuzian. Draw Franklin all over him. It's kicked around, Huggins. And here's Sergeant Jeffrey. Paris from three on the cross-court pass. That shot off the mark. Nice job by Kalen Smith holding his box out versus Huggins. J.J. comes away with a rebound, and here comes Lucas Maxick into a half-court set for the Marauders. Boy, the skip pass from Jeffrey led to the wide-open look, and ABC dodges a bullet there. It's wide open. J.J. no look from Trey Hawkins. And a couple of beautiful dimes on the baseline from Hawkins to J.J. Working well together to Quay Franklin. Yep. Uh, scores just 2.8 a game, Mike, but I feel like when we're here, J.J. seems to step it up on the offensive end a little bit. Jeffrey tries his hand at a 17-footer. That one wide left. Karam's off. Here's Baxick. Baxick will reset the offense, see what kind of set they go against now. It's a bit of a 2-3 shell. Franklin, nothing doing out there. He's looking for Chief Franklin, nearly lost it out of bounds. That's a heck of an effort by Gerard Franklin to keep that in play. Baxick will rise up, looking for J.J. falling away. It looked like he got tripped up. Jeffrey in transition will try to jam one home, and he's fouled. Kalen Smith with the denial. Man. Well, J.J. just got mixed up on the feet. We'll see here. Smith with a great challenge. Going to make Sergeant Jeffrey earn it at the line. Uh, Smith knows that we uh, like to clip these kinds of highlights uh, and send them off sometimes. So we can get them out there. It says no highlights here in our gym. And no, no poster on this one, big guy. Lewis check back in. It's Hawkins, Smith, Lewis, Gerard Franklin, Jonathan Daniels as Baxick will get a breather. Second free throw up, no good. Lewis high up for the rebound. 19-17, under 12 to go in this first half. Back and forth affair. And here comes an extended 2-3 look defensively. They enter into the high post. Lewis nearly lost his footing. Gives out to Daniels, wide open three, and a bucket. Great job against the zone. Flashing to the high post, and it gets the wide-open look for Daniels. Exactly right. Suck in the defense. Daniels sets his feet, fires away, and gets it to go. Lead back to ABC momentarily, and it's short-lived as Christopher Barrera drives in for the easy layup. Too easy for Barrera. Way too easy. Hawkins reverses it. Franklin is over two from three. Hawkins has it. He has the ability to shoot it from out there, but not necessarily out of rhythm. You see him sh step into one. Daniel's still on the dribble. Rises up from five feet. That one no good. Lewis battling for the rebound. In, in amongst the trees. Can't get a call to go in his favor. It's off to Huggins in transitions for L.A. Valley. Nico Rodriguez, who averages almost double digits on the season, into the ball game for L.A. Valley. The Monarchs with possession. Huggins rises up from the elbow. That shot up and good. That's called getting to the spot and delivering. And L.A. Valley with a lead at 23-20. to 20. Well, perhaps the mid-range isn't completely dead yet in basketball. <laughs> we'll see. Daniels just hit a three. Thought about it there. And he'll rethink it, shoot it, fire, and hit. Well, feed the hot hand, and now you'd like to see ABC do a little bit more of this, recognizing the hot hand and then start to revolve the offense a little bit in his favor. Lewis high up for a block attempt. Can't, doesn't get a piece of it, but alters the shot. He dribbles it off of his hand, but he's fouled. Man. Yeah, Lewis wants to lead the break. I want you to watch the car and Lewis get up. I mean, he is reaching for the top of the backboard here, and we're, we're a little ways away from the play as we went back pretty far. <laughs> Man. Nico wanted no part of that, and he's fouled is Lewis. A little ticky tack, but Marauders will take it. That's where you'd like to see a, 
an advanced stat in basketball. What do you think about the the shot alteration as a, as a defensive stat? As Lewis right there, I think, uh, I don't think there's any question, but that his, he doesn't get the block shot there, but he accomplishes pretty much the same thing as a yeah. block shot. I, I think it's I'm something working that, on it. We'll see if I can get it done. All right, let's, uh, yeah, send in a thesis. I'm sure they'll, uh, they'll wait 10 hey. years. Hey, listen, Mike, have you been to a basketball reference anytime recently? There's about 8 million stats now in basketball. <laughs> we, got, we got room for one more. Daniels, the hot hand, heat check, two-pointer. That went off the back iron. Bit of a broken possession there offensively. Capuzian has it. Gives it over to Barrera, who came in and hit a layup. In his opening minutes, Ryan Frazier out there for the Marauders. Barrera kicks it back. Wide open, Sergeant Jeffrey rises up, and we have two players get tangled up. And the two players that get, it was Malachi Jones, and Andre Paris. And at Andre Paris, yep. Yeah. They were initially tied up, but then couldn't get untangled. Yeah, they're going to get Jones, and I think it's a good call. Paris will rise up from 15 feet on the baseline, hit nothing. Lewis on the floor, can't come away with it. Hawkins will. Hawkins up ahead of the pack. Hawkins. And Lewis. That's one heck of an effort by the Marauders to secure that possession as Hawkins up ahead to Lewis here. That Capuzian did a pretty good job of anticipating Lewis coming back to the middle, but he's going to be whistled for the foul. Second foul on Capuzian. Couldn't quite see from the other angle, but I think there's a possibility here, Michael, that Capuzian committed that foul with his face as he might have taken a shot. Well, he gets up holding his elbow, but as Lewis spun to the basket, uh, unintentionally, but I think the elbows were out somewhat, and I think there was some contact, but it's Capuzian who picks up the foul. Well, hey, you got to guard the ball. Lewis. Second foul on Capuzian. Yeah, here comes the elbow. Yeah, right, right there. And there's not much you can do if you're Dakari Lewis there. He's got to catch the ball and finish his move. But it's it's a hard luck foul for Capuzian, who picks up his second foul and takes a shot to the jaw. Hawkins will come off. Montiano back into the ball game. Lewis off on the first attempt, has a second one coming. And Dakari Lewis shoots just 35% from the line. Needs to trust it a little bit more. Missed a there, lot of there, time this season. Is there season. a player that's bleeding? So indeed, it, somebody is bleeding. I believe it's Andre Paris. Yeah, I mentioned this is just the fourth game back for Takari Lewis, who joined the team on January 18th, and in their most recent game, a win at Glendale, had 21 points in an impressive win against the Vaqueros. Well, they're able to get that all squared away. Paris back on, taped up, and we play on. One free throw coming to Dakari Lewis. Going better. Oh, in and out. Barrera will bring things up here for LA Valley. We're tied up at 23 all. Sergeant Jeffrey with it at the high post, looking to hand off, gives it off to Barrera. Barrera turns a corner with a bit of room, gives it over to Rodriguez. Rodriguez holding, working against Frazier. Frazier doing a pretty good job moving his feet. Spin move there for Nico Rodriguez. Up and under shot, no good, but rebounded by Khalil Foster. A new shot clock and possession for LA Valley. 
Oh, we expect well, Mike, pretty good you can get caught. Ahead. I said you can get caught offensively watching a player uh, make a move to the basket, but you can get caught defensively doing that as well, and that's what happened to the Marauders there as L.A. Valley able to sneak in and get a second opportunity. Jones with a terrific closeout. Paris off with a long three. Montiano comes in with a rebound, gives off to Daniels, who'll fire his third triple. That one's short. Looked like Frazier was hit underneath, but it's tapped out of bounds by Jeffrey. It will stay with the Marauders at a fresh shot clock. L.A. Valley coming in with a record overall of 9-13, 4-4 in conference in the Western State South. ABC 2-6 in conference. Recent win over Glendale. Wins over Bakersfield and Glendale in conference. 8-14 on the year. Lewis underneath. Has that one carom off of the rim. Can't get it to go. Forrester in transition. Gives it up ahead to Rodriguez. Rodriguez dribbles it off of his foot. Montano nearly came away with it. That one thrown off of the foot of Malachi Jones. It'll stay with the Monarchs. Well, after the hot start, the defense is starting to catch up in this one. And both teams throwing haymakers early, and we've settled into uh, a methodical run here offensively. As the defense just no doubt. Jeffrey had a wide open look at the top. Instead, it gives off to Nico Rodriguez on the baseline. Double team comes. Forrester from three. That one rims out. Lewis up high for the rebound, working against Jeffrey. That one tapped out of bounds. Looks like it went off of Lewis. They'll say it went off of Jeffrey, and it'll go to the Marauders. Jonathan Daniels, who's hit a couple triples here in the first half for the Marauders, will bring things up. One handed off to Malachi Jones. Nearly traveled. That looked a little awkward. Frazier at the high post looking down low. Kicks it back out. Montiano in rhythm. It's a three. It's off the back iron. Lewis up high for the rebound. Frazier comes in, cleans up the garbage, and it's swiped away by Andre Paris. Transition here for the Monarchs if they hurry. Paris up high. That one. No contact made, so no call. Frazier comes away with a rebound, dumps off to Malachi Jones. Daniels at the elbow, kicks out to Montiano. That pass barely gets there. Montiano kicks it out. Daniels wide open from three, and I think a couple minutes ago he might have shot that. Instead, he'll pull it back and reset the offense. 12 remaining on the shot clock. Well, I'd like to see the pass a little bit quicker from Malachi Jones. Daniels uh, catches that after the closeout gets there. That shot in by Malachi Jones, and Daniels got poked in the eye. And we're going to have a pretty good look of it here. As Daniels gets raked in the face by Huggins, Jones shot up and good. It's 25-23 ABC. We'll get that change for you on the scoreboard. Daniels is okay. And Daniels to also. Off. Go ahead, sorry. So Daniels also uh, rejoining the team just recently. So late in the season, uh, John Taylor gets an influx here with Daniels and Dakari Lewis coming into the fold. But tonight they lose Evan Scott Alexander. But a different Marauder team perhaps down the stretch. And we've already seen a little bit of evidence of that as they go to Glendale and get an impressive win, but it's such a tough Western State Conference yep. uh, with the likes of Citrus and West L.A. Uh, in the conference. That pass thrown away by Rodriguez. Frazier with a steal. He nearly lost it. Get, get it to a ball handler. Baxi back into the contest. He has it, and he'll reset. Swung around. Montiano wide open in the corner. And Josh Montiano was hitting at about 45% from three earlier in the year. He's considerably cooled off. Forrester loses it. Jones with a steal in transition. That's a great Euro step. Left-handed layup, no good. That was a great move to free himself up. Paris back the other way. This is offense. Four on two for LA Valley. 
And he commit the offensive foul. Yeah, you see there, that's a great job by Montiano getting to the spot. And four on two, you just have to have better spacing, open up the lanes. Really, everybody crowded, and Paris just took it himself and committed the foul. Credit to Montiano. Well, you know, Mike, L.A. Valley, L.A. Valley, uh, not a team that is at all reliant on the three-point shot. They hit just five a game as a team. And you see that there with the spacing on the break. They don't really have uh, the makeup to really spread the floor and maybe take a three in transition. Jeff, you're exactly right. Don't really see that shooter outside of Capuzian. Meanwhile, Franklin will rise from three. Gee, Speaking Franklin. 37% from three-point range. The lead, the largest for the Marauders at 5, 28-23. Paul Harris has checked into the ball game. Forrester, Khalil has it working against Chief Franklin. Man-to-man -man defense for the Marauders. Capuzian with it out front, guarded by Harris closely. That shot up from Clint Scales. G.J. Franklin! How you doing well, here, the J.J.? Big man, the big man runs the floor and gets rewarded. 30 to 23. ABC with their largest lead. Paris fires from 15 and quells the crowd. That's a good That's response a big there shot for Andre. For Paris. Franklin rises into another triple. That one off the back iron. Long rebound comes off to J.J. And he'll kick it back out to G. Franklin. Marauders will re reset the offense. Three and a half to go in this first half. Baxic holding. It's a three out to Winchell. Baxic will rise from three. That one good. Yeah, Bagsick shoots just 15% from three-point range, but not shy on that one. Sees the opportunity and shoots it with confidence. G. Franklin in transition working against Capuzian, fouled by Paris and one! Let's watch all Marauders of them here. on a run. And how about the job by this Marauder defense? G. Franklin hit a triple a moment ago with an and one opportunity here. I want to go back to that dunk by J.J. Big man up high. And one opportunity converted, 11 point lead for AVC. And right, we have a timeout. We'll leave you with the dunk by J.J. Franklin. Thirty-six twenty-five. Marauders on top of L.A. Valley. Back after this. looking for their first win at home in conference. And up right now by 11. Towards the end of the first half. Acosta back into the ball game. All the starters in. Paris will rise up from three and that in for the triple. So the Monarchs get exactly what they want out of the timeout. 
A wide open three for Andre Paris, and he delivers. That one nearly lost. Harris able to come away with it. Short corner jumper. That's good. How about the recognition from Paul Harris? Hey, I got a little space in front of me. Let me dribble into a 15-footer and bury it. Harris now on the ground. Has a steal. Nearly had a steal. Huggins able to come away with it. Lewis trying to step in for a charge. Huggins lays it up high off the backboard for the score. Bagsik holding on the dribble, going to get a screen from Kalen Smith. Here comes a double team. Lewis loses the ball to Kapujan. Kapujan looking for a lifeline. Lewis gets a hand on it. Defense got to get back. Huggins, wide open Kapujan. Gerard Franklin with a nice closeout to prevent the three from going up. LA Valley going to reset the offense. Costa holding on the dribble. We're going to have a foul. It's going to be the fourth team foul. And we're going to get Kalen Smith. Harris will come off. Good minutes, for, good minutes for Paul Harris. JJ will check back in at the table. I think they want to get Dakari Lewis, make sure he doesn't pick up a foul. No, they're going to get Kalen Smith. So they'll have Dakari Lewis and JJ Franklin out there. Along with Gerard Franklin, Montiano, and Baxick, Paris comes free for the layup. Cheap one on the base line out of bounds play. 38-32, Montiano considerably trigger shy from three, and that's a shot maybe a couple months ago. He might have just rose and shot. Has the baseline, lay it up, lay it in. And Montiano down after that drive. That pass nearly thrown away. Let's go back to this play here. That's a foul. Yeah, on the foul. You have to call that. Yeah, David Huggins. Huggins gets on away the follow with through. a brutal foul. Are we talk about, Jeff, how often do we talk about, you know, when you come down, it's a Capuchin fires off a three. That one off the mark. G. Franklin comes in, swipes down the board, and the Marauders can hold here for the final shot if they like. And Coach Taylor saying he wants Baxick to go at around 10. Instead of double up top. Baxi comes around the corner. They have G. Franklin in the corner for three. That one well off the mark. J.J. has a rebound. Montiano, broken play. Three is good at the end of the first half. And we'll go in after one, 43-32. And the Marauders with an 11-point lead.
So I was just beginning uh, junior high and high school when Title IX came about. And I remember the opportunities for my brother, my older brother, but there were no opportunities for my sister and I outside of school. In those days, we went and changed into these ridiculous one-piece one uh, shorts outfits if you were a girl. I remember we wore the jumpsuits. We didn't really feel like athletics. Every decision that we make as administrators, we have to look at it through the lens of Title IX. I think that um, we have to see how does it affect other programs, our student athletes, and how, how we are providing access and opportunities for our student athletes. You see a lot of athletes, male and female, who haven't yet peaked when they're in high school. You know, they may have been doing soccer, either at school, club soccer, whatever it is, whatever sport it is. They may not be good enough to have been recruited right into a D1, 2, or 3 school. They still want to compete. They may or may not think they have an opportunity to go to a four-year after that. But what they know is that athletics is really important to them and they want one last chance. We don't ever want to go backwards. We want to get better and better and better. And I would say as we improve women's athletics, you're also going to improve men's. There's always room for improvement in everything we do. So if you improve one, the other one's going to come along too. We started the Community Athletic Project back in 2018 and it was a way for us to give back to the community, the young people of the community. Is, is this golf tournament gives us an opportunity to, to say thank you to everybody, to say thank you for being a part of this. Let's get out and have a good time playing some golf and, and, and have fun and enjoy ourselves and have a, a communal opportunity to say thank you. And we got some perfect weather for it. So Absolutely. <laughs> you know, the, last year we had 115 degrees, this year we're at you know, 80 and it's, it's beautiful and nice right little breeze.
started the Community Athletic Project back in 2018, and it was a way for us to give back to the community, the young people of the community. This golf tournament is, is this golf tournament gives us an opportunity to, to say thank you to everybody, to say thank you for being a part of this. Let's get out and have a good time playing some golf and, and, and have fun and enjoy ourselves and have a, a communal opportunity to say thank you. And we got some perfect weather for it. Too. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, the, last year we had 115 degrees, this year we're at you know, 80 and it's, it's beautiful and nice little breeze. Head into the second half here on SoCalCollegeSports.com's coverage, 3C2A men's basketball. Mike Zepeda, Jeff starting off with you on tonight's call. And Jeff, a pretty good battle here in that first half. And ABC with some momentum at the end of the first. You know, Mike, when these teams met nearly a month ago, the Marauders shot 29% from the field for the game and had just eight assists. Tonight, they're shooting 55% from the floor and already have 12. And that's the difference. And we start the second half with a turnover as Montiano will lay it in for the finish. You know, late in that first half, Montiano was really struggling, and he did something very smart, which was put the ball on the floor and get something going to the basket, put the pressure on the defense. He was able to get the hoop. That got him going. He hit a three at the end of the first half. Now he gets a bucket here to start the second half, and he got himself completely back on track. How about Baxic with the steal? Great anticipation. Montiano with the finish, and a quick timeout for LA Valley. To start the second half, just a 30 second timeout. We'll keep it here. This lead the largest for ABC at 13, 45 32. Just underway here in this second half.
Full-court pressure being applied here from the Rodgers. Considerably fired up here to start the second half. Can they sustain it? Be the big question. Capuzian will rise up from five feet. That one no good. G. Franklin in for the board. Good contest from Montiano on the drive. Into the corner, Daniels hit a couple in that first half. And he gets the friendly roll. Jonathan Daniels got the hat trick in the three-pointer department. The lead is 16. That one blocked by Dakari. Daniels in transition. G. Franklin kicks it back to Daniels. Wide open, Baxick dribbles in and missed opportunity there for the Marauders. I thought they could have easily shot a wide open three, but they'll reset the offense and kill a little clock here. Daniels comes off of a screen into the lane. Floater up and good, Jonathan Daniels. And the word is after he got raked in the eye late in that first half, blurred vision. And he is gutting this one out. Lead is Does he see three baskets and he shoots for the one in the middle? Well, he's doing a pretty good job of shooting at the one in the middle right now, that's for sure. <laughs> Capuzian gives, gives it over to Sergeant Jeffrey. Jeffrey was terrific early on. It's cooled down considerably. Backdoor cut from Forrester. Capuzian driving the lane against Chief Franklin. And that's a tough shot. My goodness. By Using Manny his body. Capuzian. To ward off Franklin, give himself some room. And he had Dakari Lewis lurking. So that layup stops the bleeding. Still 16-point lead for the Marauders. Jeffrey to back stick in the corner. It's a three. That one long. Forrestal will bring it up. Over to Nico Rodriguez. Rodriguez spins in and loses it out of bounds. Well, it would have been a turnover either way as Rodriguez spun and if he had possession he would have traveled but he didn't have possession goes out of bounds jj franklin into the ball game here's daniels looking for montiano off of a double as they they pin down on the screen montiano able to free himself up for the score that's pretty offense from the Marauders. A steal inside. G. Franklin lays it up, can't get it to go. Taps out over the rebound. Forrester comes away with it, and Gerard Franklin fouls him. That was very Sam Cassell from Khalil Forrester to induce the foul call from Gerard Franklin. Yeah, he's got Franklin on his hip. Creates the contact, gets the foul call. Montiano, by the way, has now hit four straight shots from the field. The big one right at the end of the first half. Forrester, I don't know if he had a dribble. Baxic dogging him. They enter into Jeffrey. Jeffrey, great move and the finish. Sergeant Jeffrey. He's Jeffrey. got an array down there. Yes, he does. Is the Pete Newell big man camp still in existence? I don't uh, know, but he'd be a camp Jeffrey counselor go? right now, that's for sure. Montiano <laughs> calls a timeout alertly as he was stuck on an island. That's good presence of mind from Montiano. Rather than force a pass in a dangerous spot. Back to the possession here. Now, go back to the footwork here by the big man and Jeffrey. We're in replay. And Forrester on the dribble. He's going to enter it in. Look at the move. Keeps his pivot foot. Rises up with the right hook for the score. Jeff, that's pretty. And he started out, as you pointed out, 
uh, a house of fire in the first few minutes. And then Mike spent a long stint on the bench yep. in that first half, only with one foul. So uh, just a rotation decision to not have him on the floor. But they're a different team uh, with Sergeant Jeffrey out there. 16-0-8 remaining in this second half. We'll get the score situated here for you. Foul call. Well, we saw a big lead for the Marauders in game one. And LA Valley was able to storm back. And that one out of bounds off of Jeffrey's knee. Jeff, you often yeah, say go, go, go into the lane with the intention of shooting. Forrester passing the entire time. Trying to make it a four game sweep, men and women in the matchup here in 2023. Montiano lays it up, has that one blocked by Jeffrey. Capuzian lurking in the corner. Nico Rodriguez will lay that one up and in. Forrester finds the open man. Daniels guarded closely by Capuzian. Here comes a double over from Nico Rodriguez. Gerard Franklin going to rise up from three. That one no good. JJ hits the deck quickly up. And we go back the other way. Paris from three. High archer. That one off the back iron. JJ trying to track down the rebound. It finally falls to Gerard Franklin. And he'll give it up to Baxic, who will have a fresh clock. A timeout called by Coach John Taylor. I think offensively, maybe losing a bit of an identity out there, and he wants to switch things up. He'll talk things over. We'll take a timeout here. 15 minutes to go in the second half. You're watching 3 c 2 men's basketball at SoCalCollegeSports.com. Taylor try to rally the troops. In a pretty good position here, 14-point lead. He wants a solid possession here. Let's see if the Marauders can execute out of the timeout. Trey Hawkins is checked into the ball game, looking for a baseline runner. Trying to get Montiano and no. Paris disrupts that. Daniels able to get possession back. Possession did not change, so Daniels dealing with a short shot clock, and JJ will rise up and lay it in. Wanted the dunk. But unable to handle the pass cleanly. Baxic going to dog it defensively. Hawkins with a near steal. Rodriguez turns a corner. Eurostep up good and a foul and one. JJ just can't get out of the way. That's a terrific finish by Rodriguez. It really is. But the floater off the contact. Watch Daniels working against the pressure. They almost had the trap, but Daniels keeps the dribble going and then finds JJ. And there you see the finish by Rodriguez. Missed free throw. And it's out of bounds off of the Marauders, so LA Valley will have another crack at it here. This could be a four or five point possession for the Monarchs. Entered into Jeffries, working against Dakari. 
Dakari, good job moving his feet. Nice find. Dakari with a near block, but Barrera with the finish. Daniels working against the press. No look. Hawkins to Lewis, and Lewis fouled in a big way. Man, that is a lot of contact from Sergeant Jeffrey. That's a big guy to be taking a foul from. It's a great no-look pass. And, you know, you, you, have, you have to wonder about that extra elbow at the end, and you're going to watch it one more time here on replay. Jeffrey, as Dakari hits on the first, gets the foul and then an extra elbow right there at the end. You know, he, he's lucky nobody saw that because that could have been uh, that could have been an intentional foul, maybe even worse. Second free throw coming for Dakari Lewis. That one was off the mark. He knew it right away. Barrera on the dribble gives it off to Manny Capuzian. Maybe he gets away with the travel. That's a long two. Capuzian off the back iron. Looked like it hit the apparatus up top. Instead, it comes off to Trey Hawkins, and Hawkins looked like he might have turned an ankle. Comes up smarting. Lewis looking to set a screen. Daniels looking to use it. Instead, he'll rise up from five feet and score. That's a nice move from Jonathan Daniels. Shooting at the basket in the middle. Barrera off to Jeffrey. That's an offensive foul. That's clearly the right call. You see Jeffrey. Lewis in position. Well, they haven't had a whole lot of answers against Sergeant Jeffrey tonight. And Lewis tries a different tack, taking the charge and gets the turnover. He need to attack a zone. And now they, they switch off into a man-to-man. -man. They... Daniels working against Capuzian inside. Lewis, that went out of bounds. Well, you like the idea, the execution, a little bit low on the bounce pass. Rodriguez gets a screen. Hawkins late to react. Malachi Jones battling for the rebound. It falls off to Jonathan Daniels. Daniels will bring it up, give it off to Baxick. And Baxick going to reset the offense here. Coming up with a 12-minute mark in the second half. 15-point lead for the Marauders. Baxick. Hawkins. Set play here coming. Staggered up top. Daniels decides to go left. He'll rise up, no good. And a good team rebound there as Paris comes down with a rebound for, for the Monarchs. Capuzian rises from NBA range, a little short. Hawkins quickly back the other way, lost it. Capuzian with a steal. Rodriguez. Should be a foul underneath. Is that going to be on the ground? Two shots coming. Rodriguez has Hawkins backpedaling. And good recognition. Gets his shoulder. Creates the contact on the drive. Gets himself to the line. I guess you have to call continuation their story, but it's pretty close. Second free throw up and good for Nico. Malachi Jones. Lewis has that one. Uh, it should be a jump ball. It's a, I mean, 
some contact there. Lewis gets Jeffrey in the in the air and one no, but he's fouled. Uh, given Sergeant Jeffrey a little taste of his own medicine, goes to the pump fake. You saw earlier in the second half going the other way. Got to finish that. You got a free hand. He's not holding it. Two free throws coming to Kari Lewis. First free throw up and good. Second free throw coming to Dakari. And that one looked pretty smooth. Back to a 15 point lead for AVC. Paris has that one blocked by Malachi Jones. Terrific defense by Malachi. Back the other way, it's a block for Barrera on Jonathan Daniels. That pass deflected, it comes off to G. Daniels looking inside to reset the offense. And Clink Scales has checked in the ball game. Daniels down the lane, and he's fouled. And Daniel's ability to handle the basketball and be a scoring threat gives John Taylor so many more options with this team offensively. Can spell Bagsick, put pressure on the defense as he does here, eventually splits the double team, gets into the lane. Yeah, you, you see the difference between Evan Scott Alexander and Jonathan Daniels. And, you know, similar effect here. They, get, they can, can get downhill, but Daniels... A little bit more methodical in his pace uh, and has that extra time uh, because he's a little bit more deliberate to sometimes draw a defender and make another play. Shoots 82% from the line so he can convert when he gets himself there. And he does just that to lead out to 17 for the Marauders. Barrera still on the dribble. Gives it out to Nico Rodriguez. He'll fire up from 12 feet and hit. Clink scales into the ball game along with Paris, Barrera, Rodriguez, and Huggins. This is Belampo into the game right now. We're going to have an offensive foul called on Baxic. L.A. Valley to bring it in. That's an offensive foul. And Gerard Franklin has been terrific. You talk about getting yourself there defensively in terms of position. G. Franklin's been doing just that here in the second half. Really heading the charge. Well, Mike, we often talk about how difficult it is to start a move from 18, 20 feet or more from the basket. Just gives the defense that extra time to anticipate and get to the right spot. Yep. Ah, to be a turnover, over and back. Classic announcer jinx story. Did I do it? No, that was me praising G. Franklin and <laughs> Of course, turnover right after the praise. Well, you're no me, but you're not bad at it. I learned for the best. <laughs> Rafael Belompo into the ball game right now. That maybe looked like an illegal screen. He's able to get a hand and maybe tap the shot up by Forrester. 
It's off the mark, rebounded by Dakari Lewis. It's a 15-point lead, and ABC with the ball. Coming up with the nine-minute mark here in the second half, and Baxick with possession gives off to Chief Franklin, working on Huggins. Palompo reverses. Looking inside to Lewis, he's fouled. Jeff, I, I was trying to listen in on a on some interaction between Coach Taylor and one of the referees. Referees tonight. Well, it's probably just Samra, Ryan Trotter, and Marte Tyler. He's probably just telling them what a great job he thinks they're doing. It's usually <laughs> what it is, right? <laughs> I'm going to defer to Coach on that one. Baxick loses the ball. Forrester on the ground. That ball gets away. Paris kicks out. Huggins. That look. Oh, somebody's hurt. Well, Huggins going to get up favoring that right ankle. Yeah, I'm look. a little surprised that we didn't see an offensive foul. It looked to me like Malachi Jones was pretty well established there on the baseline. Yeah, I'm surprised here that there is no offensive foul. That This is a push-off. And, excuse me, I believe that was G. Franklin. But I don't think there was a call there either way, was there, Michael? They're just going to bring it in from the baseline. I'll try to get some no, clarification. Actually, I, got I, Franklin. I yeah. Yeah, I think it's. I think it was the third on Franklin. So they call it a block. Huggins rises, air ball. Lewis is fouled. That's a one and one. Paul Harris getting ready to check back into the ball game. He gave the Marauders some good minutes in the first half. Balampo will come off. go back to this play here. Hey. You go back and see it, and you see Huggins kind of extend that forearm. Stakari will go back to the line, shooting the one and one. He's going to get a friendly roll. That a kid. Six of nine <laughs> now from the line for Dakari Lewis. Starting to find his range. Again, this just his fourth game of the season. Didn't join the team until January 18th, or I should say rejoin the team. Second free throw off the mark. It's a 16-point lead for ABC. Andre Paris nearly lost it. Forrest comes away with it. Nobody stops him. Dakari with an emphatic block and a foul. What's the foul? Lewis goes up. That's an offensive foul, if anything. It's two blocks for Dakari Lewis on the same possession, and instead it's a foul? Well, that is a bit of a head-scratcher from that angle. Jeff, let's watch it one more time here. We're going to see an offensive foul here. Watch Forrester on the push-off. He's going to push off and create space. That's an offensive foul. You see it right here. And Dakari Lewis says, get it out. That's a block, and they call a foul underneath. Second free throw is good. Just an awful sequence. Yeah, that's deserving of a wow. I mean, we do have the advantage of being able to go to a slow motion replay, but yeah, wow. Well, Jeff, I, I, earlier I was trying to get to uh, one of the interactions between the referee is Daniels comes free in the corner, rises up from three, buries it. Nice response from the Marauders. There was a call that went against ABC, and one of the referees went to John, Coach John Taylor and said, watch it on film. Kick out, three, clink scales, and he responds on the other end with a timeout from L.A. Valley. 65-51, 7 to go. And we'll be back here on SoCalCollegeSports.com.
dueling banjos from three. ABC back to a 14-point advantage after clink scales. Hits from beyond. Jonathan Daniels. Can I get a screen from JJ? No, he'll back off. Jonathan rises up. Man, Jonathan Daniels has been terrific here tonight, here, Stoy. 22 in the game. And again, he gives him that luxury of spreading the floor. And he's a difficult cover one on one. Balampo with the foul underneath. That's good action here. Good back door and a find. And that's that's a good call. So Balampo gonna make him earn it. Capuzian will check back in. And he's gonna come off for Andre Paris is gonna get a breather. Jeff, how many fouls for Jeffrey? Second free throw off the mark. JJ runs in for the he board. Does have, he does have four, though I don't think you can really afford to wait no. anymore. Under seven minutes to go and trailing by 16. Daniels turns the corner, rises up, gets to his spot again. No. Rebound fought for, won by Huggins. The Monarch, Monarchs will try to go quickly. Handoff not there, and Balampo going to be whistled for a foul. I think two players just collided here, Stoy. They're going to say it was on the order of a hip check here by Balampo. Let's watch. Definitely going for the ball. Both teams in the bonus. Well, this isn't what you want if you're ABC. With the 16-point lead, the clock is stopped. Allow the Monarchs to potentially cut into the lead. They miss. So you get away with it that time. Well, this game but is starting Marauders, to get a little physical the, as Capuzian commits a foul. You want the foul. clock to keep moving. Sorry there, Story. Well, and as we talked about, another... Luxury you have with Daniels is the free throw shooting ability. An 82% foul shooter. And once you get into the bonus, you can put the ball in his hands. And more often than not, you like your position getting Daniels to the line. I think right now it's a matter of, hey, hit your free throws, execute well down the stretch. It's going to be an easy win for ABC. Daniels with 24. Ah. JJ, you just didn't need and to Mike, come down. I, I think it's interesting that in this situation, up 18, you see John Taylor go to the full court pressure, but I have to tell you, I like the decision to keep his team engaged and bringing the pressure rather than maybe sitting back trying to clock watch and nurse this one home. Six minutes could start to feel like an eternity. Uh, let your team continue to play. That's three missed free throws in a row for Nico Rodriguez. And the foul was not on JJ. The foul went on Belampo. And I do think that was the correct call. As Balampo gets him underneath, I thought it was before the shot. Either way, it would have been two free throws. As the Monarchs in the double penalty, or double bonus, I should say. Daniels, that shot, or that ball tapped out of bounds. Nine seconds have gone by. There's 21 on the game clock. It's a 30-second shot clock, so they need to enter this ball in. And alertly... Coach John Taylor will call the timeout. They're going to have it in the back corner here, Story, and they need to enter it into the front court. It's going to be a 10-second uh, violation.
Yeah, Bagsik trying to beat the pressure on the dribble. And good recognition by L.A. Valley to jump that passing lane. They nearly had the steal, but knock it out of bounds. But they put the Marauders in a situation where they have just one second to get it over the timeline. So just to clarify that we don't need to inbound the ball in the front court, even though nine seconds have gone by. That's that's a little tricky. I think they're having a conversation on the referees. I wonder if we can get a shot on the referees on camera three here, Scott. As they are talking about whether or not with the timeout, do they get a fresh 10? Because Coach Taylor. And judging by the fact that we see all five Marauder jerseys down low, I got to believe they do. So they do get a fresh 10 with the timeout. Up top? Nope. Harris had to Kari Lewis, and instead Hawkins flies in for the rebound, taps it out of bounds, and it's going to go to the Monarchs. Man. Lewis was waiting for one. Harris just missed him. Forrester brings it ahead quickly, and Jeffrey taps it home. Well, he draws Lewis to him, and that creates the opening for Jeffrey. Harris goes five in. hole. Lewis comes away with the garbage. Daniels now with possession. Here comes a double team. Able to step through it. Daniels. Drives the lane, gets a man up in the air. He'll rise up, can't get the roll. Lewis up high for the rebound. Maybe he gets away with a bit of a bunny hop, but he'll score. <laughs> well, Dakari did a little bit of a hop there, but the Marauders will take it, a 17-point lead. Forrester, fire a three. That one's short. Lewis up high for the rebound, working it against Jeffrey. Hawkins comes away with a rebound. Trey Hawkins, Euro step, lays it up, lays it in. Well, no one stops the ball, and Hawkins gets all the way to the front of the rim. Get the feeling that if Hawkins doesn't turn an ankle earlier in this one, he might have rose up and tried to dunk that. That's great defense from Daniels. Moves his feet. Rodriguez has to pull up. He'll fire from three. He hasn't hit a free throw in a little while, but he'll hit the three. A timeout called by L.A. Valley. We'll do the same. 4-10 to go. Well, Jeff, you're down your leading scorer in this one, and in comes Jonathan Daniels, who's having had an abbreviated season. He has stepped up here tonight. Yeah, filled the role nicely after Alexander led the Marauders in scoring in the first matchup between these two teams, and now Daniels with 24 tonight to lead the way. 9th team foul on L.A. Valley. I would be interested to know what 
Jonathan Daniels' future is uh, in basketball after he departs here after his sophomore year. Because, Mike, I see some point guard potential for him to continue playing at the next level. Certainly has the game for it. You know, if you, if you can right the ship. You know, I'm, oh man, the, the name escapes me, but that shot up no good, but a foul. There was a player a few years ago. This is back in 2020, pre-pandemic. I forget his name. They called him Boo Boo. He played for Portland State. Eventually transferred to Bobby Hurley at Arizona State. But he reminds me of, of, of that player. And, you know, he's got a – he's just got a certain control of the game where it's never, it's never going too fast for him. And he's able to dictate the pace. And Jeff, you're exactly right. You, you know, you wonder at what level, level is he going to max out at. Well, I think there's a lot of things to like with the scoring ability and the ball handling ability. And I think, Mike – uh, the ability to knock down free throws, so important uh, for a point guard who's going to be handling the ball late in games. And Kapujian gets so the worst. So he checks a lot of boxes. And I know you talked to John Taylor quite a bit, and it's going to be interesting as this season winds down to uh, learn what he might be considering. Second missed free throw in a row for Baxick. Well, what do we say? Execute, Thank make you. free throws down the stretch is going to be an easy win. Still up by 15, but... Second made free throw, good for Basket, Baxic. This is a team that can hit threes. Herrera, from 15, that one's short. Kari Lewis up high, it squirts away. Here's Baxic in transition, and slow it down. There you go. Jeff, I thought you made a terrific point in terms of not going into the prevent defense. ABC still up 17 about a moment ago and still trying to push the tempo by initiating the press full court. Montiano from three looking for a coffin nail. No, Baxic trying to fly in for the rebound. Located by Barrera, and we're back the other way for the Monarchs. So we've lost our main camera. I'm going to be on two here for a minute, gentlemen. Lewis. Lost it. Hawkins lays it up and lays it in. You need to come down to get a battery. Well, I think. Or, or, or yeah, just come out straight on the camera. It's fine. I got it. I got one. I got one. Sorry. Sorry, story. Hey, ABC doing a nice job here down the stretch maintaining this lead. And, Mike, I think it's so important when you talk about how do you maintain a lead that you've gained in the final few minutes. And it, it's about maintaining defensive intensity and rebounding. If you continue to get stops, no team's going to make a run on you. Meanwhile, Huggins with a couple of free throws. He's got 10. And the ABC lead is 16. Montiano gets it to Bagsick. Shot clock down to 10. Lewis back to his left. Missed the fadeaway. And Rodriguez with the rebound. Rodriguez into the lane, lob to Jeffrey. And 
And Jeffrey with the dunk as we wind under two minutes to go. LA Valley back within 14. Nearly a touch foul. On the replay, you can see it, and that's exactly what you don't want. But ABC gets away. Backdoor cut. Montiano with the reverse. And this is a nice bit of redemption for Montiano. Struggled somewhat the first meeting between these two teams, and there's one for the highlight reel. And he has come on big in the latter stages of the first half and into the second half as the Marauders gained control of this one and maintained a comfortable lead throughout this second half. And they're going to cruise to victory. Down to a minute to go. Daniels will return along with James Ponders for ABC. A timeout on the floor. Well, no, it looks like we are going to continue. Opportunity for John Taylor to go into the bench. Well, it's been an up and down recent few games for the Marauders. They've had a couple of very impressive performances, including tonight. Of late, as they've had Daniels and Lewis uh, come into the fold. Uh, a couple of losses mixed in as well, but as we alluded to earlier in the second half, this is an extremely strong Western State Conference. And so you're going to have some tough nights. Taking a look at the standings. Uh, you've got Citrus and West L.A., Santa Monica. Citrus still undefeated in the conference at 8 0, and West LA, Santa Monica, each 6 and 2. So, some definite postseason contenders, not simply to make it, but teams that might yet be a real factor deep into the postseason coming out of this Western State South. Down to 45 seconds. Shot from the key for Paul Harris. And the rebound regained by the Marauders, but a backcourt violation with 33.5. 78-65. And L.A. Valley will have it back. The Marauders on their way. Thirty with seconds the win. to go here, Stoy, and again, probably the most complete performance we've seen this season from the Marauders. The Monarchs put up the white flag, and we'll be content to let this one run out. end in the hand hands of Mike Gonzalez and this one goes final 78 65 and uh, Jeffrey any final thoughts well I think uh, there's a sense of uh, what could have been for this ABC team as you watch with Daniels and Lewis uh, joining this team only in mid-January with Evan Scott Alexander uh, and a host of other talented players. Uh, this is a pretty loaded team right now. And as a Marauder fan, you find yourself thinking, boy, I wish John Taylor had maybe had a full season uh, to work with the full complement here uh, to see how this team might have competed in this Western State South. Uh, but... You get them into the fold now and a, and a terrific performance tonight. Uh, they avert the sweep and, uh, and get the win uh, by 13. And uh, Daniels was the story, uh, finishing with 24. There we see Jonathan Daniels and a terrific performance from him. But everybody all around executing. That'll do it for our coverage here.
and Lancaster. 78-65, your final. Thanks for watching, everybody. And we'll see you next week on SoCalCollegeSports.com.